So, it looks like um, the devs have responded to the community's um, backlash against the road ahead. Um, they got quite a lengthy art, um, article here, so let's see what they have to say. So, update 726-2021. Doja and I, must be crumb, spent most of the weekend gathering sentiment and feedback regarding the road ahead, which everybody hated. Below are some of the most recurring comments we noticed, and hopefully the following responses will help clarify some of the questions and concerns you have. I doubt it. We also appreciate the mass majority of you separating the video format from the news contained within the message. Hopefully we can deliver more videos in the future and work toward expanding the ways which we interact with the community. Galactic Legend and Non-Geo Counters Interactions the community has always been excellent at puzzle solving, theory crafting, and finding ways to maximize the effectiveness of the rosters. The changes are meant to not only allow for more design space for powerful characters below Galactic Legends, but also to prevent situations in which a non-GL could one-shot or otherwise severely and regularly reduce the effectiveness of a Galactic Legend. Um, okay, first off... What are you talking about? The changes are meant to not only allow for more design space for powerful characters below Galactic Legends. Every single um, <clears throat> every single powerful character we currently have, you nerfed. <laughs> so, you'll create cool characters, but not let them live up to their full potential, apparent apparently. I was about to say that stupidly like how I say it with my daughter, Perry and Tally. <laughs> Second off, um, they say that you've been excellent at puzzle solving, theory crafting, and finding ways to maximize their effectiveness. Yes! And that's what ever, the whole community is frustrated about because all the work that they put in to find those GL counters and then you guys are just like, meh, we'll make them weak. Have fun starting over. I mean, I've watched Arnold T101 when the GLs first came out and Ray, he took a long time to figure out counters to Ray. I mean, he was working on that for like a week, a week and a half. First, it was counters just with Kylo to try to figure out. Then he was like, well, for the more average player, let me try to figure out non-GL counters. And he put in a lot of work to find those counters. And, yeah, now you guys are just going to go and um, nerf half of those characters. And that's the point of what the community is saying, why they're frustrated. Like, you're just making it so that the GLs are even more OP, which is fine, you know, if you can, if you put in the work and you get a GL, you want it to be OP, you don't want, like, a CLS team to kill it, because then you feel like, well, yeah, CLS is a good character, but at the same time, like, a GL should be able to smoke him, <laughs> that, would, that would be frustrating, they'll lose versus a G, uh, CLS, unless, of course, it was, like, a Relic 7 G, um, CLS, and your Galactic Legend was only, like, gear eight then okay fine it's fair if you lose but otherwise but anyways um uh where was i going with that yeah no, the point is those are just taking away those good characters so so much for all the theory crafting now you get to start over and re-theory craft with weakened characters so now it's going to be even harder oh yeah, and then it says something about um, they want to prevent situations in which a non-GL could one-shot or otherwise severely and regularly reduce the effective effectiveness of a Galactic Legend. Based on how Galactic Legends were designed, I don't even think that was possible. Um, aren't Galactic Legends immune to moves like Annihilate and stuff? So, what are you talking about one-shot? It's literally impossible already. You don't have to make strong characters weak to achieve that. You already achieved it in the initial design. Anyway, moving on. As we mentioned in the video, changing characters post-launch is a last resort. Not only have you said that in that video, but you've said it quite a bit in the forums in the past. But we've always, the, we being the community, have always made jokes and said that you just don't like to um, change characters because you're lazy. <laughs> and you'd rather, you don't want to work on a character that exists because you can't make money off of that. Where if you make a new character, now you can make money. That's kind of like the argument that's been going on forever with up, updating um, Mace Windu. He's one of the top Jedi in the Star Wars stories, if you will, Star Wars, Star Wars lore. But in the game, he's easily one of the worst characters. <laughs> and so everyone says, where's that Mace rework? And then they make the jokes and say that, you know, the uh, CG's not going to do it because you can't make money off of a rework. But anyhow, enough making fun of them. There needs to be a balance between how consistent a counter is and how powerful the squad they are facing is in comparison. This is not just for squads with GLs, but for any squad that is able to counter another. 
For a healthy balance to the meta, counters should require a similar amount of resources to the team they can be, whether that's mods, gear, relic level, and or specific units. <laughs> okay, so you mean you're telling me like when you pair me up in, in Grand Arena against somebody that has two Relic 7 GLs, that that's somehow fair to me? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, and mind you, if you don't know my account, I only have one GL, and he's only gear 11, so... <laughs> Anyhow, GLs require a large amount of time and resources to unlock, and their place in the meta should reflect the difficulty involved in unlocking them. They are late-game units, and it makes sense they would be they would be con commensurate in power and effectiveness to their status as late game roster acquisitions that take a lot of effort to acquire. Yeah, that sentence had nothing to do with anything. We get it. <laughs> what? Difficulty of events post character changes. We are reviewing existing character um oh my word, reviewing existing journey guide events for any unintentional side effects. Our goal is to keep these events around the same level of difficulty as before. Oh, so like the um, gas event, just keep it impossible? That's cool. Three of the characters had specific updates to their kits to maintain the character's utility as a high-end unit in either areas, oh, in other areas of the game, such as PvE, events, etc. Gas, for example, had things added to his kit because we wanted to offset the changes and make sure he remained highly effective especially when leading a full 501st squad in other areas of the game. What are they talking about? He had things added. Yeah, he had things added before when he was newly launched. What are they talking about here, though? Because they... For Gas, they're adding... They're, they're nerfing him a little bit. So are they saying they're nerfing him, but at the same time, they're going to secretly add things to his kit? I don't, I don't understand what that one's saying. Dark Trooper. We noticed some confusion surrounding Dark Trooper and wanted to clarify that Dark Trooper is not getting any direct changes to his kit. Rather, the changes to Sith Eternal Emperor reduced Dark Trooper's effectiveness in this matchup, and that is why we specifically decided to return resources for Dark Trooper. So essentially that sounds like they just caused tons of confusion for absolutely no reason. <laughs> Relic 9 timing, which nobody asked for. I'm not saying the timing, I'm talking about Relic 9 in general. Relic 9 is further out and will be coming to the game after the character changes are implemented, not before. We'll share more details on Relic 9 as it gets closer. Having said that, the character changes needed to happen before R9, otherwise the underlying issues surrounding defense being ignored would be only exasperated. Yeah, well, before you even launch Relic 9, you need to do something with Relic 8, because it's ridiculous. Free-to-play players basically have no chance of even getting Relic 8. Never mind Relic 9 nonsense. Razor Crest Shards in Conquest 7. More details on, obtain on obtaining Razor Crest Shards will be coming soon. As far as Conquest 7 and the concern of no August Conquest... Huh. Wow, that's going to be a long time since there's a Conquest then. I don't really care. I hate Conquest. <laughs> but... I've been looking at it, and it keeps saying, available coming soon, available coming soon. It said that for like half this month, and now there's not even going to be one for August? Wow, that's crazy. Anyhow. Um, and the concern of no August Conquest. As mentioned in the video, Conquest 7 will experience a slight delay. Three Conquests over the next three-ish months is still the plan. This should result in little to no interference with the timeline of playing through the next three Conquests and reaping the resulting rewards of your efforts there. Executor Requirements We saw a lot of discussion surrounding the requirements for Executor and its place in the fleet meta. Yes, there has been tons of um, discussion. One, the, the requirements are completely ridiculous. First off, you need to have super beefed up characters, but ships, even though this is a ship, ah, screw the ships, four star, good enough, that's all you need, but you gotta make sure you have relic eight characters. <laughs> Like, what? Second, another capital ship. We really don't need it. We already have, what, eight? There was the original three, Chimera. That's four. Um, Malevolence, five, six. Yeah, there's eight. We don't need a ninth one now. We don't even have enough ships or enough game modes to warrant having nine. Like, seriously, when we had just the four, the starter three and the Chimera, that was plenty enough. Then they added all these other ones out of nowhere, and it was like, okay, this is kind of cool, but not needed. Now it's just getting over the top. We really don't need Executor. 
And the other thing is that people are saying, um, Executor, am I even saying that right? <laughs> I don't know. Executor, yeah, I guess, is, um, Empire. But we don't need it. We already have two Empire ships. Um, um, Grand Moff ship, uh, not Grand Moff, Tarkin. Tarkin ship and Thrawn ship. Shipped. Oh my word. Ship. So, what do we need a third one for? There's not even enough Empire characters for both of those capital ships to begin with. Now you're going to have two capital ships hanging out that can't even support the Empire if you use it for something else, like, say, in Grand Arena or um, Territory Wars. So, yeah, the requirements are stupid, and kind of the addition is stupid. Like, they should have focused on something that made more sense. Maybe add more regular ships or something. There's ships out there that they can be adding in that they're not. Like, um, what character? Um... They could add in um, Kenobi's ship. Like, they give him a capital ship, but he also has his regular ship from Episode 3 when he's flying around with Anakin. And who else has a ship? Like, there's other normal ships they can add, not more capital ships. Anyhow. It is our intention that the Executor will be commensurate in power to the difficulty involved in acquiring it. Okay, so basically they're saying even though the requirement's ridiculous, it's going to be like a GL ship. <laughs> I hope this response sheds some light on our perspective. We will continue to escalate your feedback to the team and be here to answer as many questions as possible. Does your response shed any light? No. You basically are justifying the nonsense that you're doing and did not listen to the community at all. They had valid reasons for their complaints, as did I in the video that I made, and you chose to just justify what you did. So, cool. Anyhow, that's all. And until whatever comes next, I said see ya.